All right. I guess, Joe, the ball's in your court to officially start the meeting. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Call the meeting, uh, December 10th meeting to order, uh, planning and zoning liaison meeting for the Economic Development Commission. Uh, first item for discussion is IX and I-5 zone. Okay. Um, I received the um, um, the revised uh, um, proposed zoning regulations from Tim uh, dated 12 to 2020. And I, I've got a few questions. I, I don't know if you want me to bring them up now, Joe, or... No, why don't you stop? You know, Joe, if I, if I may. Okay, Tim. Can I just start maybe with a brief introduction um, as to what's taking place? And then we can get into the some of the details. Would that, that okay? That works better. Thank you. Okay, with that, Jim? Yes, that's good. All right. So, as, as we know, as a, um, as a subcommittee of the EDC, that the... Um, uh, the zoning regulations in our industrial zones have been something that we've wanted to see addressed for quite some time. Most specifically, um, the open space requirements uh, that we have felt and via study with our previous town planner, Casey Hand, had determined the, that were quite egregious and we felt left opportunity on the table. So those uh, open space requirements are addressed in this document. And then the other thing that... Um, uh, we, you know, focused in on or zeroed in on is the uh, the allowable uses in the I-5 zone, uh, which as of as of right now um, are pretty much office development and hotel development. There's very little else you can do in the I-5 zone. The I-5 zone is almost entirely in the watershed. So when meeting um, some months ago with uh, the mayor, uh, the acting town planner Tom Talbot. Um, uh, our corporation counsel, Janice Small, just to talk about, you know, what these regulations could look like. Um, it was it was the mayor's preference that uh, said that, you know, we should have I-5 regs, I-X regs, and then we should have consistency in what's allowed within the watershed because the watershed doesn't, in fact, spill into both of those zones. So this is an attempt to try to, to, to do that. Um, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission will be meeting this coming Monday night to discuss these regulations. I do not expect that they will be voting on them. Um, I think the discussion is going to begin. And um, that kind of sets the table for us taking a position on how we feel about the regulations as presented. I will tell you that there's been, um, you know, I have a dozen iterations of these regulations, so it's been a bit of a moving target over the last several weeks. Um, um, acting town planner, town tablet, I think has done a, a fine job and, and um, trying to accommodate uh, the water department and his commission in, in terms of getting the document to this point. Uh, the one that I sent you this morning was one that was received at the end of the day yesterday. I didn't see it till first thing this morning. And frankly, because I had my day scheduled already, have not had time to take and delve into it deeply, but I certainly have the prior documents and this is just with the, this document you have in front of you is just to represent some additional refinements from previous documents. I will say that things that I think we need to be, well, let's start with the good news. I think the good news, unless something has changed in this most recent document, is that they are proposing the open space requirements be reduced from 50% to 40%, um, which and on page whatever, 14, 15, 16, someplace in here. 13, page 13. It shows um what those uh, those allowances are <clears throat> and it is on page 12 so yes the, the minimum open space is being reduced from 4, 50 to 40 except for the properties in the watershed so i think you'll find language in here that is consistent with the, the, the phrase except in the watershed and that's where I think we, um, or at least I, have the biggest issue, and that should be the subject of, I think, a lot of our discussion and angst over these changes is that, in essence, 
nothing's happening. No changes are being made in the watershed, which means that literally no changes are being made in the I-5, which is, I'm sorry, which is, you know, the purpose of the, of the entire exercise. So, um, and I say that because I understand we are all very uh, much on board in protecting our watershed. I think um, there are technologies and engineering advancements now where you can have activity in a watershed and protect your watershed. Our water department continues, as it appears, to take the position that they want nothing developed there whatsoever, which we, or I simply feel is unreasonable and overly restrictive. Um, and I think that's going to be the bone of contention um, in, our, in our discussions and conversations um, on a go forward. So that's the backdrop, and um, uh, I'll leave it at that, I guess, as to what, Joe, you feel next steps in conversation. Hi. Go ahead, Hank, and then Jim. Uh, Tim, or, or uh, Jim, I, I know that in the past we've had discussions about what other towns do um, as far as uh, minimum and maximum square footage of building and so on and so forth. Understanding that this is unique, I, I think the, the backdrop that you had given um, several times ago, Jim, uh, Tim, uh, was very helpful to me when you start to learn the history of, the, of that whole area, having been a, um, uh, an apple orchard and the contentious, um, what it was contentious about turning that into uh, what it is today. So um, understanding the, where, we, where we came from is important to, to uh, understand why we, where we are today. So I guess I, um, I know that in other meetings that we've had, Jim, you had some information regarding what other towns in the area are doing in, in that regards. And I think that would be helpful for the uh, planning and zoning Commission to hear that um, because we can't we can't be the only place that has a uh, uh, an IX zone or I five zone that has watershed in it. Yeah, I, I'm sure we're not. Uh, but a while ago, I had asked that question to Casey, and she surveyed some towns that um, allowed their uh, industrial buildings to uh, utilize as much as 75% of their land. Now, you know, for a footprint, I, I can't say whether or not those were in a watershed. I don't know. Casey had done the research on it. Tim, do you have any notes on it by chance? Um. I don't know that I have notes in that specific conversation, but um, I think one of the byproducts of that conversation, Jim, was that um, you had asked me to go out and identify businesses that right now exist in Wallingford in the watershed. So if I may briefly, and then categorize those businesses by use. So if I may, I just add this. So. Um, Exist, existing big businesses in the I-5 and IX zones, warehouse users, right? We have the Connecticut Food Bank, and we have Lyndon Meyer Monroe that has since relocated. But nonetheless, that was an active use in the IX zone in the watershed. Warehousing is something that is being, you know, reconsidered. Um, electronic assembly. We have Vertiv, Sensor Works, both existing companies, and we have Sensor Switch that was in the watershed. They have since left the community, but nonetheless, they were an active business operating in the uh, um, I-5 zone in the watershed. On the manufacturing side, we have Proton Onsite, GKN Aerospace, um, Philips, both, both active uh, manufacturers in the watershed right now. Phillips Respironics, which is, as we know, is, is leaving Connecticut, uh, but nonetheless has successfully operated a manufacturing company in our watershed 
Uh, I, I share all these companies because these these companies have not. I mean, we still have, we have clean water. All these places are operating under certain rules, guidelines, and regulations in our watershed, and we have clean water. So um, the question becomes, why are we disallowing any more of them if these work now? But the new regulations, based on my understanding, would prevent these companies from look to, from if a new company in these categories was to come to town, they may not be allowed. Uh, we had the Bristol Myers power plant that ran in the watershed. All right. And the transportation category, uh, Durham school bus services still exists, still operates in the watershed. New England auto transport is a new business that is uh, opening up. This built a new building on three acres over on uh, Research Parkway in the watershed. And in the distribution and repair business, we have Abel Womack lift trucks. Uh, they are in the watershed. So the point that we're trying to illustrate with that is that if, if, these, if these businesses can exist and function, deliver benefit to the town of Wallingford, um, not only from a taxation standpoint, but given all the economic multipliers, jobs, et cetera, if they can exist in that watershed, I mean, Bristol Myers Squibb in the watershed, right? So if they can all exist quite nicely in a watershed, then why is it that on a go forward basis, we would not allow any more of them? It just, it, it, to me, it, it just, um, it's, it's not congruent with the way that we, we should be thinking. So I think we should have, you know, the way this, this uh, uh, proposal was initially put together, these regulations said very specifically that the first iteration was allow, the, allow those uses, but allow those uses in the watershed via special permit, which in my opinion gives us the appropriate oversight to make certain that we can put, we can put, you know, uh, regulations and, 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 you know, the proper protections in place because each of those sites would be, each of those uses would be permitted by special permit, which gives it extra oversight, which is what we certainly all want in the watershed. We want the extra oversight. So history has proven that these companies exist in the watershed quite nicely. And all we're asking for is a fair chance to allow businesses in these categories an opportunity to be considered for development in the watershed via the special permit. The water department has since lobbied to take, they can exist in the, in the zones by special permit, but not in the watershed at all, which I think is just a way over the top um, request. And if we know of other businesses that exist in the watershed that you'd like me to add to that list, um, let me know, but. Uh, is, is APS in the watershed? I'm gonna I'm gonna look up. I'm sorry for you. You're gonna have to look at my belly button for a minute, but I've got the map on the wall, and I'll I'll look. Um, I don't think so. And they're right next to the post office. Yeah. And that's that's not in the watershed. Yeah, the post office is in the watershed. It is. Um, so I'm looking for. APS Technologies is not in the watershed. Oh. They're right they're right outside the edge of the watershed. Okay. Right. Specifically, um, when we were talking about the 40 versus 50 on page 12 here, um, you know, an, an argument certainly can be made that um, that each one of those businesses that has more open space is treating that with pesticides, correct? Um, yeah, so in, in, the, um, in the detail in the document, Hank, what um, the water department has said, and frankly, I don't think it's unreasonable, is that they're, they're saying that they, they, will, they would rather have roofs than parking lots because you can best control the water coming off a roof better than you can control water running off a parking lot. Right, and that's my point. 
they would rather have um, un, um, uh, undisturbed um, prop, you know, uh, woods, you know, that type of thing. They'd rather have undisturbed property than, than groomed grass because okay. groomed grass, you know, typically represents some sort of pesticide use. So uh, they did put in the regulations uh, for the open space, they would prefer to see most of the open space undisturbed. Let it let it stay in its natural state. Okay, let uh, me let me clarify something if I can. Question, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry to butt in. Uh, I think we got two separate issues here. First of all, they the the regulations is addressing the change to open space, which they're increasing, which I guess is not utopia, but we are accepting that. Am I agreed on that? Well, they're, no, they're, they're decreasing the open space requirement, which is something that we would be in favor of, except That's what I mean. watershed. That's what I'm saying. So what they're addressing on the uh, footprint, we're in favor of at this time. We'd like better, but we'll accept that. Then the other issue is the watershed area is being completely uh, restricted from all changes. Right, which means that we were adding restrictions in the watershed in the IX right. zone that weren't there before. Right. Well, are we adding restrictions or are they they're just saying under special permit? No, because the language, and let me just find it specifically. Um, Question. Thank you. But if but if the I uh, the I five zone is mostly in the watershed, then we're not we're in effect not doing anything. If we exactly. reduce that, if we reduce exactly. that to forty, it, it's yeah. really um, uh, it's really on paper. It's not helping anything. Well, there's there actually um, I actually counted the properties like. <laughs> that are in the IX and the I-5 that are not in the watershed, and I believe it's 26 properties. I counted them with Casey one day on the map, and that's what this would affect, would be 26 properties. 26. And maybe it was 25 or 27, but it was right around there. We, we counted them. Well, that's an interesting statistic. I'm sorry, Jim, could you repeat that? I was looking for the data that you got. The Casey and I counted the properties in the IX I-5 that were not in the watershed on the map in her office at the time. And it, I believe it was 26 properties that this would affect the, the increased footprint. And she had told me that there was, I believe four or five that were already increased under a uh, ZBA special request. So, so you might end up with affecting 20 properties with the increased footprint. All right, so All right. the reduction of the open space requirement. Right. All right, yes. The, the, only, the only thing I, I've read through this twice, everything you, you uh, sent me, Tim, and the only thing I can see that might um, be a selling point to the water department would be the fact that they want the uh, open space to be natural. And I think if we were to say, look, we'll contact all the property owners, which is not that many, and say, you don't have to have so much lawn. And you could, you know, you can let some of it grow up, let the vegetation grow up. I think that would be a help because I know the history when this was um, apple orchards and barns, they used uh, DDT and um, that property has been contaminated for years through the apple orchards. So whether it's washed out now or not, I don't know, but um, it's not. So I think that might be a selling point for us to, you know, 
let them know that we're in favor of letting the vegetation grow. And I got to tell you, I know for a fact that there's a lot of property owners that would love to let some of their lawns grow up. So I don't know if we can use it as a tool to, to you know to say to the water, the water department, look, we agree with you, let's do this, but can we have a give and take? Yeah, the um, the give and take is was supposed to be happening. Uh, and it goes back to that meeting we had months ago. I mean, Casey was still here, so um, and I was frankly quite disappointed that the um, some of the compromises that we were led to believe. Um, I'm going to say compromises because you know, and at, at all costs and in every scenario, we are protecting the watershed but we can protect the watershed and still develop responsibly. Not overdevelop, not get the wrong types of uses in there. We can still protect the watershed, develop responsibly and operate responsibly. And we felt that, um, uh, and again, the mayor had, had set, made it pretty clear that uh, 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 the uh, uh, town planner's office and the water department need to work it out. And then what we do is we get a document that is very, very one-sided. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to me. Again, the initial document we received said development, expanded uses in the I-5 or in the watershed. All right, only under under by special permit, which I think is fine. There's no issue with that. I mean, it's we want to make sure that we are very, very you know, deliberate and purposeful about anything we're going to allow to be developed in a watershed. We want to have control as to how it's developed. No issue with that whatsoever. But then all those uses, there's a there's a caveat on page seven of the I-5 is item number six. All right, it lists the, the uses that can happen in the watershed, or excuse me, in the I-5 zone. And then it says, except that any such use on properties located in the watershed protection district shall not be permitted. So, Hank, to your point earlier, they're saying, yeah, you can do all these things, but you can't do them in a watershed. Low life lives in a watershed. But what do you, what do we, what do we get? The net is nothing. Nothing happens. Where the special permit language, I think, was much more reasonable. So, um, what I suspect will happen after Monday's discussion, which I think we need to be prepared for, is that um, I will, I, I've already spoken to Janice Small. Uh, and I, we want to talk to the mayor and say that we really have to have another sit down with water, sewer, town planner, our legal legal department, and the mayor, economic development, and say, you know, this this is certainly not meeting in the middle by any stretch. Um, and we need to make sure that you know they know that um, if you concur, that we feel as if um, this is overly restrictive and it's not reflective of. Frankly, in some cases, people people's legal rights to use their property. I, you know, what we're looking for Monday. Excuse me. What we're looking for Monday <laughs> is basically uh, uh, for them to push this back to another workshop meeting, rather than uh, just change everything to special permit, because they're not going to do that Monday. I would, I would hope that you know, one of the positions that we may take is that, you know, we participate in the discussion on Monday, but appeal to the planning and zoning commission that they, are, they not vote on this as presented unless we see that there's significant changes to it Monday. Um, and if it was if it was passed in its present state, uh, I, I think it would be, a, uh, you know, a travesty for the, for the town. it will be another 30 years before anything gets done. No, it's only 16, John. <laughs> Jim knows how long it's been at this point. So, well, no, it's 16 years we've been working on it, but that property's been laying dormant for yeah. how long? Yeah, um, forever. Forever. Yeah. forever. It's never. A lot of it's never been touched. Um, I think that's the best course of action. Having read through this, that we get. Uh, uh, Jim Seichter on board and push it back to a workshop.
Well, let's change some. This hasn't been submitted to anything yet, Tim, has it, Tim? Uh, no, this is, again, I, I got this at the end of the day yesterday. was after I left for the day. And, and um, again, I have not reviewed it. I need to review this thing, you know, line by line, uh, which takes will take some time. Um, and my day had already been scheduled all morning, so I have not been able to do that. But um, I did see where some language had changed and, and not for the better from our standpoint. So. Could we, could we preempt this and have it remove the agenda until we have time to sit down and talk about what concerned? Am I the only one having trouble hearing Joe? No, I, I am. He's breaking it up. Yeah, you're breaking up a bit, Joe. Try again, please. I think what he said was, can we preempt this and have it taken off the agenda until we uh, have a chance to uh, review it? Is that what you said, Joe? That's it. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. Um, no? Okay. No. I, I don't know what's happened. Did it work fine the other night? Yeah. It's working, it's working fine now. Yeah. Keep talking. Okay. Can we do that, Tim? No, it's every not. time you get close. Every time you get close. It's just... Hello? Try again. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, fine. Maybe maybe I should uh, use mount wash and getting too close to me. Anyway. The uh uh, no, so uh, Tim, that's uh, I guess that's the serious question, though. Can we? I mean, it looks like it's so far apart that it's going to be really a waste of time. Uh, it's going to take up a lot of time. Uh, you know, can we do that? Yeah, you know, the the packets have been sent out already, Joe. I think um, it is the. Oh, it is. I think it's the main issue on the agenda. I think I think having the conversation is is I think it's worthwhile. I I don't know that we buy anything for but by trying to get it off the agenda. It's not it's not our agenda item. So um, okay. I I would be amazed if it was something they were um Monday night. Well, this is no. I think. No good? No, that's right. Go ahead. I don't know. God bless technology. Um, I don't know. I, I think this is a bill that most commissioners will go along with. That's what scares me. I don't think they see the long term. I'm hoping that they'll see the long-term problems. But in all reality, this, just, this bill, the way it's written, takes every effort that we put into it and makes it mute because it doesn't do anything for the I-5 zone. Right. Agreed. So all I those meetings, all those discussions, all those workshops were for not. Agreed. So I, I think that's why, you know, uh, for Monday's meeting, that we need to be prepared to say that very thing and, and say that, you know, that we would implore the commission not to not to move forward at this point until we have a, uh, a chance to take and uh, work this work this through. It's just so that's right. the case. I think we have to make that this this yeah. is not this is not a positive thing for uh, economic development. I'll I'll add that. Um, I think everybody is familiar with uh, Kristen D'Amelio. Um, she is the uh, uh, owners of one of the uh, 25, excuse me, one of the, yeah, one of the 25 acres parcels behind the Hilton Garden Inn. Uh, okay. They, they have been, Kristen actually attended one of the public workshops on the, um, you know, this, this whole discussion. And she wrote a very pointed letter to the mayor uh, to the commission, uh, copied me on it because I communicate with her from time to time, but more often I communicate with her broker. 
um, who is trying to, is a fellow from Collier's, um, a commercial brokerage firm, and, and uh, you know, they're trying to market the property. Christian sent a very well-worded letter um, to the mayor and to the commission about the fact that, you know, that this, this is restricting your use of her property. Which, uh, that's what happening. So. Joe, as um, the, I'm still going to play the new card, uh, the new card. As a new kid on the block, how do we? Um, how do you want to approach this? Do you want each one of us to to speak? Do you want Tim to speak? Do you want you and Tim? You know, um, how do we want to communicate our? Position? I, I think you know history, history will show you that uh, Tim usually starts off, and then Joe and I will chime in if we think we need it. Um, Joe and I have, have developed the attitude that if everything's going our way, we keep our mouth shut. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and, um, you know, so we, we uh, will chime in if we, if we have to, but I think Tim should, you know, present, present our case uh, just the way we're stating it today. Okay. Okay. <laughs> If you have something you'd like to say, don't hesitate. I mean, uh, okay. you know, I've been where you are a couple of months ago, many months ago. <laughs> you know, yes, no, so, so, you know, there's been a lot said this today, and I'm sure you picked up a lot. If you feel you have something to add to the conversation, please feel free to do so because eventually you're going to be chairing this committee and. Uh, yeah. Okay. Feel free to chime in, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, I think the message is, is the common thread of our message is that responsible development exists now in the watershed. And all we're advocating for, obviously we want to protect our watershed, but we can do so by still allowing responsible development. We're still allowing responsible to shut the door altogether, the water department will argue, well, the best way to protect the watershed is to have nothing more in it. Well, I think intuitively we can understand that that would be the case, but I don't think that that's in the best interests of the entire community and the entire town of Wallingford in the long run. No one's advocating for anything other than responsible development opportunities um, and, you know, the special permit language allows for that. So. I think that um, that's really the that's really the position. And by eliminating any uses of that in the watershed, I mean that's just I, I, you know Bristol Myers wouldn't be that would would never have been there. <laughs> so I mean they they that was the number one taxpayer in the, in the city in the town of Wallingford, and they they did quite you know quite uh, beautifully. Um, well, I, I really think Tim, the number one offender, if you have one. Is 91. About right. 91 running through there. That brings on more problems. In it. But I did want to say one thing. Um, I just lost it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But uh, no, that's it. I, I, oh, you mentioned something, and, and that that's, Hank, I, I'd like you to understand this because. It's something that I don't think we've made the message. I don't think the message is clear enough to, to the councils and the commissions that we we come before on all these programs and these projects is that we're not there about the one parcel of land in the I-5 zone to make that uh, uh, interested and profitable and to get it uh, developed. We're here in, in, in my uh, viewpoint for the whole town's benefit. What we do benefits the community as a whole. And I think that's what the commission has to understand. This is just not about the watershed. It's about balancing the needs of the community with the risk and the technology that, that exists to minimize the risk. And, uh, and they have to understand that. 
It's not about one single issue. It's the community. Everything that we do affects the entire community. And bottom line, the tax base. Without development, the tax base shrinks. With development, the tax base increases. It's just common sense. For my uh, Tim, for my own edification, I don't recall we didn't have a workshop um, or several workshops like we did uh, for the downtown center, uh, which I found very helpful. So, who is coming up with these uh, particular changes? Uh, who, who's authoring this? Well, the author of the document is the town planner, but I, I do not want you to mistake the author um, with support. He is being directed to include, as, and these are his words, he's told me directly, because I, I sat down with him a couple of weeks ago when the first iteration came out, and I said, Tom, I mean, I, I don't understand why you would support this. He said, oh, it's not that I support it. I'm told by my commission to incorporate the water department's comments into the document. So okay. that's what I've done. So okay. this is not his opinion, but he is yeah. the author. Okay, so forget the author. It, it, it's coming from... Um, the, the commission is telling, you know, that, that the, uh, that the water department has certainly has a lot of, uh, uh what would appear to be a lot of weight, uh, on that. And, uh, you know, so that just reiterates the fact that when we ask for a, um, a workshop, uh, so that, or, or at least like you had said, Tim, a, a, uh, meeting of everyone coming together. Uh, so that this isn't just a, a lopsided document, that this has um, balance. I would agree with that, thank you. Because nowhere does it appear that your um, ideas have been incorporated uh, in there either. It looks like it's just watershed, our water department, I mean. Yep, I would agree. Yeah. Very one-sided. Okay. Yep, and the okay. water department... Yeah, when it comes to the water protection, you know, the, the watershed and the, uh, you know, uh, the aquifer areas, um, you know, their their job is to protect our water supply, and we yeah, always. I, that. I I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but there's um, you know, got to be a balance, like you said. I would agree. I would agree. And it, you know that balance. Just to be clear, we're not saying so the water is good now, but you know we can just make it a little dirty by adding. No, we, we can add things by not affecting it, you know, negatively impacting it at all. I mean, engineering advancements have come a long way. Um, look look at the Bristol Myers site. Okay, so you know that that just to raise that building, it's a million square foot building that got knocked down, all the rubble you know dragged away, etc. We've got the power plant that was there, that was disassembled. All right, and taken off the site. Now we're back to, for the most part, we're back to, you know, virgin land. And the um, uh, Inland Wetlands Commission, you know, set up the guidelines by which you're going to disassemble the, the biggest, you know, building in the entire town. And you're sitting on top of our watershed. You're going to disassemble this in a way that our water quality is not going to be impacted. And in fact, they did which tells me and tells all of us that it can be done. All right? right. It's hey, Tim. hey, guys, on page six, um, first uh, 410A, uh, the purpose to utilize the key locations of land with accessibility to Route I-91 uh, while protecting the town's public water water supply shed by requiring high standards of development. And where where are, you, are you? Page six at the top uh, under 410A. A, yes. Okay. The last part of that is by, uh, by requiring high standards of development. I would like that. I mean, I, I want to protect our watershed, but I mean, does that cover us in, in any way, shape, or form? I mean, yes, if you want to put another person in there, then you got to do it right. 
I think that's an excellent point. And what we're basically saying is that th that is that is the purpose of this regulation. But by virtue of them disallowing anything in the watershed, it, it, it's contradictory in their own regulation. So you know, right. we, we don't want them to go back and change the purpose. So which would put it in compliance. We well, we want them to change the other side of it. Right. We want them to uh, to have the higher standards of development. And, and I think we're all in favor of that. Nobody wants to destroy our water. And I would I would encourage, you know, at Monday night's meeting, I think there's power in numbers. So, you know, regardless of what I say when I have an opportunity, I, I think for them to hear it again and again and again, I think it's powerful. Um, so I think we should all be saying something. I'm certainly, you know, bond to leave something out or, or you know, you can reemphasize a point or whatever. But Jen, the point that you just made there is a very, very good one. And yeah, I, I'll use that Monday night. Uh, in fact, I'm going to mark it. Uh, speaking of Monday night, um, will you email us the the proper uh, um, what do you call it global go-to meeting number for that meeting yeah i'll make sure lynn does yeah monday night six o'clock right or six thirty Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. I haven't looked at the agenda yet. I don't know where this is at. Out yet. I don't think it's out yet, which is another problem. You know, poor Tom, he's doing a great job down there, but he's uh, got some staffing issues within the department that have slowed a lot of things down. So he's uh, he's a he's a one man army a lot of days. So. so I'll have and, and that go to meeting um, information is on the agenda. So I'll make sure Lynn um, sends the agenda, planning and zoning agenda to this committee uh, when it's released. Thank you. Give me a second, I'll ask if she has it yet. Lynn, do you in fact have the PNC agenda for Monday night meeting yet? I do not have it. Now Lynn just confirmed that she, had, she does not have it yet. I just want to be clear. Can you hear me good now? I, I can. You can. Your, 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 your mic is very inconsistent, Joe, so we can hear you. And then you go in a mid-sentence, you go into garble. But um, until I had, I actually had to get a new microphone here at my desk that just uh, managed things better. Uh, but what I would do in the meantime was I would go on, you know, the video. I would shut my microphone off in the computer and I would dial in on my cell phone or you know your office phone or whatever. That way you, you have a your voice is is you know clear. You're not dealing with your microphone challenges there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big case in point. Now if you if you want it, Joe, I mean I don't know how much longer um, or what other agenda items we have, but just dial in on your phone. It, the phone number to dial in on is right on the agenda that I sent you. I can give it to you if you don't have it. I don't have. I, I have. Wait a minute. I have. But you got to make sure you mute your computer, yeah. or we'll have that echo. Right. So while Joe's dialing in, I will say that earlier in the meeting I had mentioned that the uh, the other uh, uh, person that's on the call. Are uh, in the meeting um, with NA. That happens to be Jessica Weisaki. She did send me a chat note saying identifying herself. So I thank her for that. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I, I think we're in good shape now. I, I think we know what direction we're going in for Monday night, unless somebody wants to add something. I would just add that, um, you know, utilizing, um, are you with us by phone now, Joe? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I, I did speak directly with um, uh, Corporation Counsel Janice Small regarding the use of uh, the special permit. Make sure that technically, um, you know, we, we, we're saying that we have the proper, um, you know, controls in place by making sure that any use in a watershed is by special permit. I wanted to make sure that legally uh, that was a, a sound avenue to take. Uh, that someone wouldn't say, well, technically you can't use a special permit that way. Um, and she has confirmed with me that that, in fact, would give us the uh, the appropriate oversight that we, we feel it does. So I think it may have been intuitive to you guys, but I wanted to make sure and and, uh, and check to make sure that we, get, you know, caught flat footed on making that suggestion. Good. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, do we want to um, schedule a meeting sometime next week, Joe, after Monday night's meeting, just to take and regather our thoughts? Yeah, I, I would. I'd like to do that. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I've got my calendar open, so. Um, I'm open next week. Is this a good time for you, Hank? Noon? Um, you know, lunchtime is usually um, good. Uh, I'm I'm free all day Tuesday, and I'm free all day Friday. Okay. It's all the same to you guys. Um, my calendar is pretty packed next week. Uh, with um, so, Hank, if it's Tuesday or Friday, I, I can't do Tuesday until it's unless it's late in the afternoon. Um, my first, I'd say 2 o'clock or after on Tuesday works for me. Other than that, it does not. Or um, I can do anything Friday that you'd like. If we do Tuesday uh, after 2, then we've uh, everything's pretty fresh in our minds. Yeah. So you you can do something like uh, you know two thirty on Tuesday, Hank. Yep. Yep. Joe, Jim. Yeah, that great. works for me. So why don't we say Tuesday the fifteenth at two thirty? Okay. Yeah. I'm good with that, and I wrote it down, so I'm all set. Okay. <laughs> Now, let me ask you this question because I, you know, you know, I have trouble with it. Will it be the same um, connection with the uh, for the virtual meeting? Yes. That we have now. Yes. yes. Okay. I'll save it. Now. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have. It's not been mandated, um, but it has been strongly recommended that all of our town meetings be virtual versus in person, and. Um, the go to meeting platform is one that has been uh, preferred by the town's IT folks. So, okay. Okay. Works. Hey, maybe okay, we'll have. Don't you get a different code for each meeting, Tim? Yes, you do. Okay, you'll have to send this out. Well, I, I will, I'll send you uh, minutes of this meeting. Okay. And then uh, I will send you an agenda the next meeting along with those minutes and then that, on that agenda we'll have the code okay well maybe uh, soon we'll have a vaccine we can get together uh we're all looking forward to that <laughs> all right all right then i'm good does anyone else have anything else to say or i'm good see you guys monday night i'm good i'm, I'm good I'm set. All right. So let's adjourn the meeting and I'll uh, see you Monday. All right. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye.